Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel or one of my YouTube channels. This one is called Daniel's Tech World. It's where I post random videos about random technology. And today we have a very random video. Weird and wacky forms of optical media. Um, just while I'm down the optical media rabbit hole, just kind of plumbing around in here, um, I thought I would do a video about the various strange forms of optical media that were, and that in some cases kind of miraculously still are out there. Uh, they're quite interesting, or at least I think so. And um, I just want to say, I'm going to get back to doing videos with me on camera, but um, for these like presentation ones, it's actually, I feel like kind of hard to do because uh, the way my screens are set up, I I'm kind of looking to the side and it becomes distracting for me. So this is just the presentation. Okay, this is this is the first one. Um, this is called a laser disc. Now, I grew up in Ireland, so I never heard of these things. My wife grew up in America. We're almost the same age. We're, well, a few months apart. But uh, she actually does remember the laser disc. This must have, I don't know if this was like totally obscure or it passed me by, but uh, this is, I, I think it's it's rather comical. It's like a oversized CD or it's like a vinyl sized CD, um, but it's actually not really that. It is actually a hybrid form of storage. Uh, this was the first, but this was the first uh, to the best of my knowledge and according to everything I've read on the internet, this was the first optical storage, but it's not actually fully optical, um, which is also the case for the mini disc. So they look just like a CD or looks like a kind of almost uh, spoof of a CD, but it's actually a little bit different than that. Uh, but that's why it's called the laser disc, because when this was this thing was coming out, the idea of writing uh, data using a laser was, you know, considered revolutionary. So they said, let's call it the laser disc. Um, I think Pioneer, according to Wikipedia, um, Pioneer were like, had a big stake in this and they had a couple of brand names, but laser disc kind of stuck. Um, I totally want to get my hand on my hands on a blank laser disc and I want to apply for a job and send my CV on a laser disc and courier it to the job. That's one of my, uh, life aspirations probably not a hard one to do uh okay so a little bit about it it uh that was 30 centimeters uh, so i don't i'm not a vinyl guy i don't know what the size is and of course there is a subreddit this is what i like about reddit there are things to dislike about reddit but there are subreddits for every random technology thing that's ever been basically so there is a subreddit over at our laser disc and it's not fully digital so that distinguishes it from cds uh um cds DVDs, Blu-rays and M-Disc, which are the kind of stuff that I'm actually using in my day-to-day -day life for archival. Um, so it's sort of like, I think it's best understood as a bridge between the analog and digital worlds in video. Obviously, dig video started out as analog and you don't have to be that old to remember VHS tapes. I remember using camcorders that recorded onto VHS. Uh, that's a, actually kind of a fond memory from my childhood. Um, the, this, this thing, the Laserdisc came onto the US market in 1978 and according to Wikipedia, it never really kind of took off. But the exception was in the, in Asia, which is kind of fitting, I feel, because I, I feel like Asians are into weird technology as a general rule. Um, and in Hong Kong, this was like the thing. If you rented a movies, remember, and that was also speaking about fond memories. That was a great memory, renting movies on physical media. So if you were doing that process in Hong Kong in the 90s, you apparently would be renting a, a you know, a laser disc. Um, you can still buy the players and on that subreddit, some people said they got their hands on burners, but because it's a hybrid digital art, digital uh, analog technology, uh, they're big and expensive. And at some point you just have to say like, how much money do I want to spend on a completely random piece of technology? Anyway, this is what they actually look like. Um, the the Laserdisc subreddit, you can still, you can look at people's uh, operating these, the video folks, the home video people like them. Uh, they're, they're definitely a collector item. Um, and yeah, that is, I have never seen one in real life. So I hope at one point in my uh, life to meet a laser disc. All right. The mini disc. I actually totally remember the mini disc. I, re I remember the mini disc as like the first, I think it was, um, one of the first, it's like one of the first presents I remember. It was like a birthday present or something. And it was the coolest thing in the world. You could write your own media. This was back when, uh, burning CDs was also like kind of a, uh, like a baller thing to do by downloading, you know, your, um, 
Epi 3s off Napster, uh, which I also have memories of. Um, but the mini disc dies um, not as long ago as you might think. It was 2013. And uh, we can kind of all know the reasons. I mean, who uh, who would want to would have need for this? Like, if you were really into listening to physical media, um, you would buy a CD player. I have seen people still using, like, portable CD players. Um, battery powered and all that and there's probably still a market that I there's probably still people making them with like modern connectivities like USB-C I'm gonna put my money on that um, but yeah so these were the mini disc uh, came and went and it's important uh, just to note that the mini disc and the mini CD aren't one and the same um, I didn't I googled are they different and because um, I was looking at the mini CD recently out of curiosity and then I realized that, um, no, these are actually different things. So the mini CD and the mini DVD are like smaller form factor versions of the CD and DVD. They're 80 millimeters versus 120 for the um, the form factor, which all modern optical media shares, which is quite convenient for buying stuff like uh, jewel cases and binders. They all fit, basically. Um, so the mini disc, actually, I didn't know this. I thought it was a pure optical format. It was actually mag- what they call magneto-optical. So this is what Wikipedia says. To write the thing, a laser below the disc heats a spot to its Curie point, making the material in the disc susceptible to a magnetic field. Magnetic head above the disc then alters the polarity of the heated area, recording the digital data onto the disc. Um, So quite an elaborate system for writing the data. That's more complicated than, um, I would say, pretty much any modern form of optical media. Like the Blu-ray is quite impressive but uh it's just optical to the best of my knowledge pitting into a layer uh so playback is accomplished with just a laser so i i i I feel a bit bad now because i definitely punched my old mini disc player repeatedly for uh burning issues and i never realized it was doing something quite sophisticated so sorry old blu-ray player of my childhood so this is the BBC. Uh, yes, that's actually what it's called. It's called the BBC. Um, and this, this of all these ones, this is the one I had not heard of. Actually, there's maybe one more. Um, I never saw these things. I never heard of them. So basically, it was. It's, it stands for a bootable business card. Uh, it was a kind of weird form of CD that was like shaped to be like a business card, although that doesn't look very much like a business card to me. Um, it looks like it was compatible with like regular CD drives because it's kind of fitting in there. It's got the right diameter, but it's kind of, um, you know, weird on the side. Um, maybe some were actually properly rectangular. Uh, some people called it the... So it was a 50 megabyte product, as you expect from the smaller form factor. There's less data capacity there. Um, and uh, it was like a conference gimmick from what I read. The Linux bootable distros were also popularly distributed on BBCs uh, for a time in the 2000s. Like that was the thing. At a conference, you'd get a BBC and that would be amazing. Um, so there's a few, some articles about this uh, that you might want to read if you're interested in learning about this weird technology. Um, they they describe Ernie Smith uh, describes this, describes it as a particularly tacky variant on the business cart um, that was around the turn of the twenty first century. So mini CDs and mini DVDs are still actually out there, and I've just ordered some of each for kicks because while down a rabbit hole, one celebrates the rabbit hole, um, embraces the rabbit hole nature of their um, discovery. So I just bought, they're pretty cheap. I, b- I bought about $5 worth of each on AliExpress. I have no idea if they're going to work, but it's a fun, it'll be a fun experiment. These guys are 80 millimeters in diameter as opposed to the standard one of uh, 1200. Mini CDs are 210 megabytes. And I was actually surprised by this. The mini DVDs, they actually got the dual layer, the DL technology going on. So the initial one was 1.4 and then they did a dual layer and they got that up to 2.6 gigabytes. So it's not quite double, but close. Um, So they were like used in camcorders, I guess, after VHS and everyone seems to hate them. Um, People who use these seem to be almost universally dissatisfied. Like in camcorders, I don't know if it was just like a bad media for um a camcorder but they were it's, uh, this is just my impression from uh from reddit that they were from the internet uh that they were not 
uh, well liked by the videographers of the day. Um, you can still find a, a mini DVD burner on Amazon. I'm surprised that some of this stuff is still out there, frankly. Um, this is the only one I could find. It's called Sandberg. I think you can read the mini media in regular CD DVD drives. If you know that, please let me uh, please clarify in the comments. Um, but I think to write them, you need one. I'm not really sure. With my ten dollars worth of mini CDs and DVDs, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, they still sell them. They still sell the media on Amazon. Uh, you can buy the mini uh, DVDs in a fifty spindle and one point. Like it, it's kind of interesting because at one point four gigs, okay, it's a small amount of data, but it's actually more than CDs, and you could still fit some. I mean, I could still fit a few YouTube videos on uh, your average mini DVD, which is kind of interesting to think about. And then the mini CDs are actually quite cheap. They're 215 megs and they're 22 bucks for a 50 spindle on Amazon. So I imagine the manufacturers are just trying to get rid of these old uh, things. Um, I actually still, I definitely, I've just realized when I put this slides together, all these, I always throw out, I, I order some stuff from AliExpress and they frequently come as a miniature CD, uh, which has the driver and I use Linux. So the drivers are never really any use to me uh, because they're usually a Windows driver. So I'm const I've been throwing these little mini CDs out for years, wondering what the hell is that? And uh, now I know what it is. It's a miniature CD. Um, so here's the dual layer, dual layer ones, uh, verbatim make them, and you can still find these on eBay, the dual layer mini DVDs. Um, so this is actually an, an interesting one because it's not as anywhere near as old as these. Um, this is the Sony had this kind of random product that was like, they kind of bunched together a bunch of optical discs and made it with a decent capacity, um, as a rival to LTO but they discontinued this product. So the thing about this, the down, the pitfalls I would say was that firstly, it was proprietary as far as I know to Sony. And secondly, the drives were bloody expensive. As you can see, it was like kind of the approaching the cost of LTO drives. Um, the cassettes were generation three. You can still find them on B&H for uh, 183 bucks. They were 5.5 terabytes. So they actually... And it was worm. It was worm optical media. So it was right once, um, and it was basically a bunch of optical discs kind of working together in a, in an enclosure, uh, sort of similar enough to some of the products Sony still uses for the ENG camcorders, where they've got a bunch of uh, SD cards kind of mushed together into one super SD card. Um, this one had eleven optical discs, three layers on each side, five hundred gigs per disc. Um, and they were planning a next generation to reach one or two terabytes of cartridge, which I guess we'll never see. Um, and as I said, you can actually still find these on uh, B&H. And um, I think people were kind of neutral to them. I don't know. I've never, I never used one. The only time I would have had that kind of money for a drive, the only chance I would have had to use one was at work. And I never uh, used this tech personally. Uh, it would be cool to hear from someone who did. Um, I've never actually used LTO either, which is um, another tech I'd love to get into, but the drives are just so expensive for rookies like me muddling around on the internet. All right, here's another ra here's a here's another random one. Um, I said if I'm going to show all the weird forms of optical, I'd really kind of try to show them all. Um, I, and one I also never heard of. Uh, there were apparently attempts to like beef up the CD, and Sony came out with this double density CD at 1.3 gigs. Uh, Sony and Philips. So they kind of played around with the laser a bit. Um, it was actually the same wavelengths, but they played around with the media narrowing. Well, let me just read what it says because otherwise I'll just get it wrong. For a 12 centimeter disc, so it was the same form factor as today's CDs, it doubles the original 650 megs to 1.3 gigs um, by narrowing the track pitch from 1.6 to 1.1 micrometers. And shortening the miniature the minimum pit length from zero point eight three three to zero to zero point six two three micrometers. Um, the DDCD was also available as read only. Um, the specification allowed for both twelve and eight centimeter discs, although it appears that eight centimeter media was never released. So they actually could have made a double density mini CD, but that never never happened. Uh, then there was this whole. Holds a uh, sin whole kind of see. I told you there's like random things to know about optical media. There was this whole kind of uh trade war going on with a few people 
back in the day, back in the 90s. Um, and anyway, it's now confined to history, but you can actually still buy them on uh, eBay, uh, which again, I find kind of fascinating. Again, I have no idea as to compatibility with modern CD-ROM burners, um, but if you've ever used them, that would be cool to know that. Um, all this stuff, I, I can't see any use for it myself because it's not really, archi- doesn't look like it's archival spe- specific. Here's one that's so random I couldn't find any photos. Uh, all, I could f- all I could find was a random Wikipedia entry about this one. Multi-level recording, ML, also known as m uh, was a tech originally developed by Optex to increase, again, as another kind of go at increasing the capacity of optical um, they said that they could bring CDs up to two gigs, which was would have been quite ambitious at the time. And they thought that they could uh, push DVDs up to 10 gigs and Blu-rays to 60 gigs, which uh, I was going to say that's better than what we have. But no, we have uh, 128 gigs Blu-rays. So, um, yeah, I don't know what actually happened to this one. Um, verbatim got involved, it seems. All the kind of big names in optical media got, including MCC, uh, were involved and um, I, I don't know I ne- I've never seen photos of this uh, this line of products if you know of them please send a link so then there was also this MD data um, I think we're at the end finally uh, this was again magneto optical uh, like the original mini disc but it was kind of supposed to um, build on the build on the storage capacity but it kind of came at the wrong time um, to the market. Like, I think the, this is the impression I got anyway, by the time it was uh, it was there, you know, streaming was already like a thing. Um, but there are some like random products that still take it, like Tascam have one and Sony have one. So, you know, there's a couple of like weird hardware products on the market that you have to use these like bizarre optical relics oh we're done okay so that was it i hope this has been interesting if i missed any and you know of other weird forms of optical storage from yesteryear uh let me know or if you've used any of these products also let me know uh interested to hear from folks uh thanks for watching until next time have a great day